let's get started. Um, so today we are talking about that there is only one team one. So this means from all the teams that you're in, there's only one that is most important for you. And in this talk, we are going to talk about which team this is and why it is so important to you. And actually, most of you know that modern leaders are not part of just one team. Right? So of course, we are part of the team that we are directing, right? so with our directs, but we're also part of our leadership team. So the team that we formed with our peer group. And in addition to this, we are also part of project groups, working groups, and a lot of other groups that we are in day by day. Um, and also modern leaders, they have way more responsibilities. Huh? So we should be approachable, we should care for our people, um, we should work on overarching topics, increase our networks, prepare all hands and conferences, um, et cetera, et cetera. But in the end, uh, as much as you want to, you cannot dance on every party. And this leads to the question, how do I balance out the work in the different teams? Uh, so how do I prioritize when there's a conflict between my responsibilities, which is the team that really deserves my attention um, and which deserve my focus and which team is my team number one uh, and how many of them do I have? Um, and that is an important question uh, because if you stretch yourself for too long, then this will sooner or later have negative side effects on you. So as we said before, you cannot dance on every party um, and you also cannot run all projects in parallel because the more topics you burn for, the sooner you will run out of fuel. And this becomes even more important for passionate leaders. Uh, so there are different studies out there that show that there is a strong correlation between passion and burnout. And they more or less in a nutshell say, the more passionate you are, the more likely you are to take over topic after topic after topic and until in the end you completely lose control of your work life. And this sooner or later leads to A, a feeling of energy loss, B, increase of mental distancing from your job and C, reduction of professional efficiency. And these are actually the three steps that the World Health Organization defined on a burnout. And maybe some of you know some people who actually felt these feelings before. And this kind of reminds me of this scene from this old 78 Superman movie. And so some of you might know this. And there is this scene where there's a helicopter crash and Lois Lane is in this helicopter and they crash on the top of a skyscraper. And she tries to get out, tries to save herself, eh, does not succeed and falls actually out. But Clark Kent is around, uh, turns into his alter ego Superman, flies up into the air, catches her and says, easy this, I've got you. Um, and then she actually looks at him, looks down to the ground, both are flying 100 meters above the ground. And then she actually says, you've got me. Who scared you? So yeah, who scared you? So actually, who catches you when you fall? And even more important, who makes sure that you don't fall at all? So who carries the responsibility to make sure that you are protected uh, while you focus on all the teams that you are in? And I think you know the answer to this question. And I'm not saying that you should now become an egomanic, narcissistic douchebag, right? so by far not. So you should care for your teams and the teams that you lead, and you should be there for your people and protect them. Yeah, but you should also make sure that they're safe and you should not place yourself above them. So like Simon Sinek once said, leaders eat last. But although leaders eat last, you should not forget to eat at all. So maybe you know the scenery. Yeah? So start your day in the morning, a couple of tea is on the desk, start at 7 a.m. with the first meeting, second one, third one, and so it goes like back to back until the end of the day without any break. And when you shut down the laptop in the evening, you realize, oh, I'm quite hungry. So this means before you can make the decision on the right team, you should actually listen to your body. Uh, so do I feel hungry? Am I tired? Am I exhausted? It's important to listen to those signals that your body is sending you and fulfill its desires because you are the only one responsible for it. So it's important that you are mindful to the current situation that you are in. Yeah? And also you want to give 100% on all the teams you work in you need to find some time to recharge your batteries. So it doesn't matter if you do meditation or proper lunch or you meet your friends, just make sure that you have enough time for yourself. And this also requires um, that you organize your time well. Uh, so don't let others take control over your calendar and over your work life. So don't let others block 100% of your time and then expect that you have enough slots left to recover. That's not going to work. Uh, so create blockers and make sure that you take them. 
And this also requires that from time to time you say no. So don't get me wrong. It's good to help others. It's good to be nice to others, but don't forget to be nice to yourself. And no one will blame you. And also no one has the right to blame you if you say, sorry, I really would like to help you, but I need some time for myself. And as you're responsible for your own body, your time and your well-being, other people are also responsible for themselves. Uh, so no doubt caring for others has a big impact on making this world a better place. Um, but in the end, you are not responsible to solve everyone's problem while you put your needs aside. So just remember, you've got me. Who's got you? Because otherwise you turn your work-life balance into a work-work balance, uh, where the rest of your private free time is consumed by the thought of, what am I going to address tomorrow? And the path on this downward spiral, it's slow, but it's steady. So please well, don't forget to break the circle. And now that we understood that besides working on many different teams, it's also important not to forget ourselves. We now can look into the team that's most important for you. Yeah? So actually the team that you should focus on. So the team that when in doubt or conflict, you actually prioritize over others. And there's only one team one. That is you. Because if you fall, then there is no man of steel to save you. If you fall, then you fall. And you cannot protect others anymore. So please remember, you only have one life. Handle it with care. Thank you.